Well, hello, and how are you doing? My apologies that I was absent last week. I wasn't doing well. I wasn't doing well physically or emotionally for that matter. However, this week is a different story. I feel great today. And because of that, I thought I'd come on here and give you a live show. Again, I apologize. Last week I wasn't available. And I, I did get I did manage to squeeze one short through. I wanted to provide you with more. Unfortunately, the week got away from me. My schedule was a little hectic. And, you know, things don't always work out exactly the way you want them to. But that's okay. Because, you know, the thing is this. We're still here. We're not pushing up daisies. And that's a good thing. Or at least I like to think so, anyway. So, I apologize, once again. Uh, I, I started about a minute late this evening, and I didn't mean to do that, but I was just working on some other stuff in the background, and I have some serious production work to get done this evening. I have um, a couple of videos to edit, and I have uh, several podcasts to um, get the audio portions edited and ready to be posted. I also have to update some um, uh, script work. Script work? I don't know if I could call it that. Either way, I'm really busy. (laughs) And I'm not complaining. I'm really not. Um, It's good to be busy. It keeps keeps your mind occupied, keeps you from, you know, doing the Doing the bad thoughts, behaving in a bad way. So I'm preoccupied with work, and of course, Miss Lola, my lovely eighty-pound love hound. Um, I didn't think I'd be a dog owner at this stage in my life, but here I am. And even though it's I had to create a, a, a whole new way to live. And my apartment will never be clean the way I like it to be ever again because she sheds so much. (laughs) I might have to buy a bigger vacuum cleaner, honestly, because I question if the little dirt devil I've been using for the last 14 years is going to last much longer with the dog in the house. It, um, yeah, it's a lot of cleaning constantly. You know, having a dog is like having a toddler for 12 to 14 years. So there's some interesting things that go along with that. I don't have children, and I never will. I mean, I'm going to be 56 in a couple of months, so I'm not starting down that pathway today. That would be absolutely absurd, don't you think? I think it would be. And what am I going to do, start playing catch when I'm 70? (laughs) That's not going to happen. No, definitely not going to happen. But I do, uh, I do like being a, a dog owner, a da- dog daddy. I, I, don't, I don't know what to call it, even to be honest with you. I, I love the my dog. She's wonderful, and I'm happy to get up every morning, very early in the morning, to take her out for walks and I didn't think I would ever say that honestly because one of the reasons I I didn't have a dog for a long time was just because to be a good owner there's a lot of responsibilities a ton of responsibilities and I don't want to be a bad owner I don't want to be a bad dog daddy so I uh, do my best to give her the best life I can which is you know 
I think all I can, uh, all I can do and all I could be asked to do, to do, uh, I don't know, maybe, you, you tell me, maybe you know better than I do, I don't, I don't know all that much. Some days are struggles. Um, most days aren't. Most days are pretty darn great. And, and that is, you know, pretty much all I can ask for is one great day after another. I mean, what, what more would you want, right? So, um, my, my computer's going a little haywire right now. It's not behaving correctly. I don't know why that is. It's been great. Um, got a new computer back in February, but for some reason right now it's chugging along. I might have to do a hard reboot. Sometimes that's what it takes, right? Just a a good swift reboot. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. I am uh, I'm a little tired. One of the things about this time of the year is uh, the wonderful allergy season, which, as anybody who suffers from seasonal allergies would know, can be really, really difficult and really trying and uh, interrupts your sleep patterns, makes your mood fluctuate in ways that you probably didn't even know until somebody pointed out to you one day that you were being a, a bit of an arse to say the least. And that was somebody who pointed that out to me many, many years ago. It was a family member, actually, about, what was it, 1980, 1986. My allergies were really kicking my butt and what I did not understand at the time because how old was I, 17? Just before my 18th birthday? I, you know, your frontal lobes aren't fully formed, so, you know. I don't diminish what young people say. I'm, you know, I have young people around me, and I'm like, I'm, I want to listen to hear what they have to say. Your your rationale and your your ability to control yourself, I guess, for want of a better term, isn't a hundred percent at that age. And I I certainly wasn't. And it was a family member who said, uh, basically, Paul, you're being an arse. You need to get in to see a doctor because. The medication you're taking for your allergies is not working and it's affecting your moods and behavior negatively. What are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Well, as it turned out, they did. And the doctors explained to me how allergies can... It's not just a stuffed up or, or sinus pain or itchy watery eyes or scratchy throat. It can alter your mood, alter your behavior prevent you from being who you really are. And that, that's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow when you're 18 years old and you're just trying to figure out your way in the world. I remember it well. It was, uh, it was profound. It was a profound moment in my life when I realized that I did not have the control over my faculties that I thought. Now, I had depression at the time and anxiety. I just didn't know it. It was undiagnosed. So that those two things were certainly heightened um, by the allergies. And at this you know time of the year, springtime, when I don't sleep well because coughing, sneezing, wheezing, taking medications, a cocktail every day, which is never really fun, admittedly. Um, I would prefer to be able to just get up and be on with my day, but that's not always the case. Hasn't been the case actually in a long time. That's okay. That's some really good medication that does wonderful things to help me be a better me. And some days I, I do struggle. Medication is a cure-all. It's not a cure. It's a, a treatment. And it certainly helps, but it, it, it doesn't fix or cure. It's, for want of a better term, a bandage solution. And it works. It stops the bleeding. I don't know. Bandage, bleeding. I thought that went hand in hand, but it stops the um, bad thoughts. 
stops the negative thoughts and it helps you to approach things rationally and logically and hopefully help you get a little bit of sleep. Now, one of the allergy medications I take, it's a one-a-day pill, and it, uh, it does a pretty darn good job. But again, it's not a cure-all, and there's some times where it's like, okay, i got to take a Benadryl because I am suffering horribly. The sinus pressure is so bad, I just want to go and bury myself in the sand. <laughs> just be away from the, just be in darkness and quiet and silence and because you, you're getting a migraine from your sinuses due to, to environmental allergies. And I've been suffering from migraines for decades. And some of them are bad. Sometimes they're really bad. And, and, and darkness and silence with an ice pack is the only thing that will work for me. I have a friend who's never had a headache in his life. He has no idea what it's like. I'm not joking. He, he doesn't know. I'm like, I, he told me that. And I was like, can I give you a couple of mine? Because <laughs> I have them constantly, all the time. I'm always in pain physically. Which, of course, can lead to emotional pain. Too much physical pain can manifest itself in different ways and as a result may develop anxiety or depression. I don't know if that's where it comes from with me. I know, I know the moment when I, I, for want of a better term, but cracked. I, I don't want to talk about it this evening. I've talked about it in the past. Maybe I'll talk about it again. But uh, as for this evening, I, I don't feel like talking about it. Well, I'm sorry to hear you're fighting the flu, Stephen. I hope you're feeling a little bit better. Yeah, it, never experiencing what it's like to have a headache. That's a dream. I don't know... I remember once years ago, about 2012, I think it was, 2012, 2013, might have been 2013, I'm not entirely sure of the date, I'd have to, I'd have to do some work to figure it out, but anyway, I um, was on a construction site with a colleague, and this colleague of mine had, had been through a horrible car accident about a year prior. I don't know, it might have been eight months prior. And he, the fact that he was even at work was when I saw pictures of the car accident and I saw what happened to him and, and the surgeries he went through, I thought this is miraculous that he's alive, let alone the fact that he's at work. So he carried a, basically a fanny pack worth of pharmaceuticals because he was on a lot of medication, pain management, recovery management, so on and so forth. And I was working away on a construction site, so it's dark, it's dirty, it's dingy, it's loud. And all I can hear are the sounds of, of the electric motors in skyjacks, which are scissor lifts, for want of a better term. And then the constant beeping of them backing up and moving around, plus all the other sounds that you hear on a construction site. And I have a horrible migraine. And it's a Friday. And it's about two hours before my shift ends. And he looks at me and he goes, are, are you okay? I was like, no, I have a wicked migraine, man. I can't even concentrate on what I'm doing. He says, you know what? Why don't you just um, take the rest of the day off? I go, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, it's 4 o'clock. Knock off now. We were working 6 to 6, uh, 6 days a week. Yeah, it was, it was a hell of a, a project. Anyway. He says to me, he says, here, listen, I'm going to give you two pills. Take one uh, when you get home. And if you need the other one, take it four hours later. But he says, in all likelihood, you won't need it. And I'm like, well, this, what is it? And he says, it's Percocet. And I went, hmm. He says, when you get home, if you need to take it, take it, if, if you need to. He says, don't take it if you don't feel you need it, but it, it will help. It, it will fix your headache. So I got home on a Friday evening. It was about, I don't know, 6.30 by the time I got home. And I thought, you know what, I can't, I can't deal with this. I, I, like I'm sitting in my apartment, just, I got to get out of here. I, I can't stare at the walls because all I can think about is the pain I'm in. I need a distraction. So I said to heck with it, and I took the Percocet. 
Then I went across the street to the pub and I sat down and uh, the bartender looked at me. She goes, are you okay? I said, no, I have a terrible migraine. She goes, what are you doing here? I go, I had to get out of my house. This will serve as a, as a distraction from the pain because there's people here to talk to. There's things going on. She's like, okay. I go, look, sometimes I need to be in dark silence with an ice pack on my head. And sometimes I need a distraction. She says, okay, I understand that. That makes sense. So I ordered, I ordered a, a pint of Guinness. I sat there. And about 10 minutes later, it was like, boom. I'm like, this was the miracle. All the pain in my body was gone. Gone. I've never experienced a day that I can remember prior to that and since that where I didn't feel any pain whatsoever. Either in, you know, the migraine was completely gone, but my back pain, my shoulders, my neck, my knees, my legs, I had no pain anywhere. And when I got home, I I flushed the other pill because I thought, well, look, this one worked. It took care of what I needed to do. I'm going to throw it out because it's a pretty addictive narcotic. It's very effective. It worked incredibly well. And I literally had never felt better in my life before or since. But it's like, well... I don't need, I don't want to feel like this because of medication. You know, I'll take a pill and there you are. That's how you get addicted. I didn't want to be addicted, so I just tossed the other one in the toilet. Which I was told later that you shouldn't do because it can get into, I don't know, water supplies or something. I don't know, but it was one Percocet. But it did literally cure what was ailing me in that, in that particular moment in time. And I remember walking home. I wasn't high. I just was not in any pain for the first time in decades. And the relief I felt from that. It was like the weight of the world was lifted off of my shoulder and the pressure of my sinuses was just released. I was still stuffed up. But there was no pain. So that was weird. But honestly, I... I'd never felt better, physically never felt better, emotionally. Well, that's a different story. I wasn't on medication then, and I was still dealing with a lot of stuff. But I, I thought to myself, you know, if, if, if this medication can make you feel this good all the time, I could understand how somebody could get addicted to it. I wasn't high. That wasn't the case. I just was no longer in pain. And I just said, well, I'll just flush that because we don't, we don't need that. It's a very effective medication. Then I can, like I said, understand why people can get addicted to it. Opiates have that effect on people. Pain management is, uh, well, I don't want to get into the Sacklers and Oxys, but pain management is, is something. Um, it, it's, it's not fun to suffer all the time. It really sucks to suffer all the time. And I'm always in pain. I have a very high threshold. And some days I'm able to just let it roll off my back. And other days, it's like I need a, I need a few minutes. I gotta, I gotta try and figure this out. And Bridget is always telling me, my beloved is always telling me, she's like, I don't know how you do it. How, how do you go on? Every day you're in so much pain. I'm like, well, I like being alive. And um, there's a lot in this world that I still want to see and do. And I've learned how to manage it as best I can. So that's what I do. I just keep rolling along. It's all anybody can do. Oh, Miss Shattuck, I, I know, I know what you're talking about. I've been there. I know exactly what that's like. It's um, hellacious, to say the least, to feel pain like that. Physical pain and emotional pain are two different things, of course, and they can both be incredibly deleterious to your psyche. 
detrimental to your well-being as a human being, how you respond to other people, how you interact with other human beings, how you are able to accept, um, well, good, bad news, whatever. When you're in physical pain, extreme physical pain, you may lash out. And I know I have in the past. So I've learned how to control that. The emotional pain, the pain of depression and anxiety is a, is a different thing. I learned how to hide that so that nobody knew what was going on with me. I, I, I don't want to hide it anymore, but here's the funny thing. I do. <laughs> I, I will be very vocal and open and, and free to discuss when I'm going through something. But usually I, I don't talk about it until I've come through the other side. Sometimes I might just say, and I've had friends where I'll give a buddy a call and I'll say, hey, um, let's go to the pub. He goes, what's up? And I go, don't want to talk about it. He's like, I'll meet you there in five minutes. That's like a code to say, I'm suffering horribly and I don't want to discuss it because I need not think about that. Let's do anything to distract me from it so that I can get myself to a good healthy place. Sometimes you have a couple of drinks too many and that's not healthy. But, you know, you do what you got to do in, in a moment of desperation. And I don't care for those moments of desperation. I haven't had one in a while. Uh, I've had a few in the last couple of years, even, you know, with the meds, but not like it once was. Nowhere near like it once was. Now I can count the bad days on one hand before I can count the good days on one hand. So the flip-flop in my life that I have now, it's like I don't ever want to go back to feeling that way ever again. I can't be the person that I once was. I won't suffer like that ever again. I will take whatever medication is doled out to me so that I can enjoy my life and be happy and, and not let stress get to me. Because since, since starting on the medication, stress is... We have stresses every day. Everybody does. But with the job I have, the position I have now, and where my life is today, I just don't get the stresses like I used to. Do I get upset about stuff? Of course I do. Anybody who watches my political show will understand how I express when I'm upset about politicians doing terrible things, but we don't discuss that on this show. The show is only for those of us who need to talk about our mental health and how we're doing. I'm not going to ever stop anybody from coming in. You're welcome to join. You're welcome to join the chat. You're welcome to be a member of this little community that we're forming, as long as you're willing to check your biases, check your politics, and check your religion at the door. You check those things at the door, you're welcome to this party. Because here we're just going to discuss what we're going through, how we can get better, how we can cope better, how we can prop each other up. I know what you're saying, Ms. Shattaka. Um you, you can't, and, and I've talked to my partner, Bridget, my, my beloved wife, um, how when I am in the depths of it, when you're in the dark place, I'll tell her, look, I'm just suffering right now. She's like, can we, I'm like, I cannot talk about it right now. I can't. I will tell you about it later. For right now, I just need to get on with my day. And I don't want to think about it. I, if we talk about it, then I'm thinking about it, then it takes over my entire thought process, and I get on this treadmill of anxiety and depression, and I don't want to talk about those things. I just want to live my life the best way I can, so let's... Ignore it for now. 
We've acknowledged that it's there. But let's talk about anything else. And when I come through it, when I get to the other side, then, and only then, can I discuss what I was feeling and what I was going through. There have been times where I've I've said, you know, um, this terrible thought just entered my mind and I'll get the look of, oh my God, what, what do I, I'm like, you don't have to do anything. I'm fine. I'm not going to act upon the terrible thought. I just wanted to share with you that I had a terrible thought. I don't like it. I, I don't want it. But I need you to know where my headspace is right now. And now let's move on to something else because I cannot talk about this anymore. I told you how I am. Let's move forward. <sighs> well, thank you, Mishatika. I'm glad I could help. Sometimes the, the negative thoughts come in at the weirdest times. Sometimes you just have a random moment where your brain will tell you to do something terrible. Thankfully, I'm rational enough to not act upon it and also know how harmful it would be to everybody around me. I know that there are people who love me. I know this. One of the ancillary benefits of depression is you can't often feel it. I know people love me. I know that there would be people who would be hurt and harmed if, if I left prematurely by my own hand. I know that. Uh, but I don't... How to, how to say this? Like, I know people love me, but I can't always feel it. And that's what depression does. It robs you. It robs you of love. It robs you of joy. It robs you of happiness. It robs you of your future. It robs you of your own personality. It robs you blind. And I'm sorry if you're visually impaired and are offended by that. I didn't mean to do that. Anybody who knows me knows I don't want to harm anyone. Even the handful of people on this earth I do not like. I don't want to harm them. Because hurt people hurt people. And I don't want to hurt anybody. What that means is people who are doing harmful things to others have been hurt. And they need our help. Now, I don't know if we can always give them empathy. Sympathy is definitely way down the priority list. But compassion is always there. I will always have compassion for somebody who has suffered horribly from depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder or somebody who has been on the receiving end of terrible things in their childhood. I'm not going to dig into them. There's no need to. You can let your imagination run wild. I will be here for you to help you in the only way I know how, which is to discuss this in an open forum here. There are a few other things I want to talk about, but I'm going to leave them for another time. I might put another couple of shorts up this week if I have a mood here and there. I have more work to do this evening, some editing, so, you know, late night and all. But I do want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining this little community that we're starting to grow. For those of you who are watching on the Twitter, you can find me at, um, what's my, what is my, uh, I don't even know what my own uh, YouTube address is. What is it? Uh, Polly's World 2005. There we go. YouTube.com, Polly's World 2005. I'll just put it in the chat here. For, well, actually, you know what, that's pointless. Only... Only folks who are looking on YouTube would see that, but it's uh, Polly's World 2005 on the YouTube if you want to go there to join in the YouTube chat and become a member. You can join my channel, subscribe to the channel, and join, uh, become a member, and, and, I don't know, become part of the community that we're trying to build. I'm kind of stumbling over things right now, so 
I am going to take my leave there. And I will see you soon. Thanks for coming by. Take care, eh? Wish, 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 wish.